You know, judging from the number of requests I get for trailer hitch locks, a, a lot of you guys must own trailers and boats and jet skis and stuff. Uh, usually when you send me a request, I order it right away, and by coincidence, these two came in on the same day, and uh, obviously they're different packaging, but looking at the picture here on this box and this one through the package, these two appear to be almost identical, except this one uh, is the 379 ATPY, and this one says that it is rekeyable, so that's really promising. And the odd part, though, is that this one costs only 26 bucks. This one, um, again, appearance and weight and everything, I haven't really busted the package open. Uh, this one's almost identical, except this one doesn't say rekeyable, and this one was $61. I just don't understand the logic here. Let me go ahead and cut both of these, well, open these up, take a look, and do a little closer comparison of these things to find out why is there a $35 difference between a rekeyable one and what apparently is a non rekeyable one. All right, I've had about 20 minutes to take a bunch of measurements off of these, and I think you can see without any fancy measurements, these are identical. They come probably from the same factory. The only difference in these things, this one is an enamel red, and this one's kind of flat black. I mean, other than that, they are identical. They, even in weight, they have the same, uh, same weight. This is 1.82 kilograms, or 2 pounds, 6 ounces, and they're all within tiny fractions of grams of each other. So I think that might just be the difference in the weight of the finish. No difference whatsoever. Insofar as rekeying, because they are identical, this one, the cheaper one, is supposedly rekeyable. I don't see how. Um, that cylinder looks to be held in there with this little pin. It's not even a roll pin. The only way um, the instructions say to rekey this is to take it to your master lock locksmith, and he will rekey it for you. Well, I guess that would hold true for this one, since they're put together in exactly, you know, in identical ways. You'd have to drill that pin out, pull that pin out of there, then the cylinder would pop out, and I guess you could rekey it and stick it in there for a, in this case, a $26 lock. I'm sure that the rekeying would cost a lot more than the lock did, so not really sure it'd be worth the effort. All right, I, I wonder how difficult they are to pick, and they can't be too difficult. First of all, they're master locks, and secondly, both of these have identical four-pin locks. I'm going to make it a little more interesting, though, because a lot of you guys say, well, you know, you make it look so easy in the lab. It's much more difficult to pick these things in the wild. You know, when you're out there on your hands and knees and you're bent over trying to pick it while it's connected onto a trailer, you know what? I got a buddy not too far from here. Let me take these over there, install them on his trailers, and let's see how much more difficult it is to pick these in the wild. All right, guys, today we're going to work on Dane's fishing boat. This is the Master 379 ATPY that I put on here. Let me go ahead and put the camera on a tripod so it'll be a little steadier for you guys to see. And I'll demonstrate the lock and then we'll see if we can't get it open. All right guys, one of the bad things about being a universal coupler lock is that there's so much slot built into the whole system to fit such a wide variety of couplers that, see there's an awful lot of play in this thing. I'm not able to pull it out or I don't even think because of such a beefy chunk of aluminum, we probably couldn't even pry it without damaging the coupler, but it just loses a little confidence with all that flopping. Anyway, it does work beautifully. Rotate, and you can see that that thing just slides back and forth. So I'm gonna slide it up into the coupler, slide it in just as tight as I can get it, and then do a relock. Still an awful lot of play in that. Let's see if we can get that thing picked. I'm gonna go ahead and take my field kit, and let's see what we got here. We're going to need a tensioner, I'll use bottom of the keyway, and let's pick it in a couple of different ways here. Let's go ahead and try to rake it, I mean, it is a master lock, and then we'll try to single pin pick it while it's installed. So, and just slide it right in there, and let's first try to rake it. We'll throw this down, all right, a little bit of tension, slide it in, and let's see if we can't get this thing open. There we go. You know, you guys are absolutely right. These things are so much more difficult in the field. They are so much easier in the lab, you know? Anyway, not such a great deal. Let's go ahead and lock it back up. Find the key, I threw it down in the grass here. All right, we're again locked up. Let's take the same tensioner. And this time I'm gonna be using a medium hook. This was 23 thousandths from the Praxis kit. Slide it in. I'm going to try to bully this one a little bit. So slide it in. 
apply pretty heavy tension. Not as fast as raking, but I'm clicking away here. I got uh, pin one. That was pin three. And there we go again. Again, not so difficult in the field, but again, we're only working with four pins on this lock. So while this thing might be absolutely beefy, well designed, I mean, you're not going to be breaking it. It's such a heavy duty thing. The fact that they put such a junky core in there probably defeats the purpose of the whole thing. Let's go ahead and put his red brother in there and see how difficult he is. All right, guys, let's see if his brother is any different, any more difficult. I doubt it. This is a 389 DAT model. It works exactly the same way. Slide that up inside of there, compress it as far as we can get it, rotate the key to lock it in place. These are not shimmable, by the way. I did take a look at them in the lock lab. So you do absolutely have to pick these. But as you saw in his brother, it really wasn't that difficult. And I'm thinking because this is the same four pin core, it's different bidding on this one, but probably not going to be a lot more difficult than the first one. All right, same tensioner. It's going to use the same pick. Just slide it in there. A little bit of tension and then just start breaking it in and out. And <laughs> I think you can see it's just as easy as his cheaper brother. But the benefit of this one is it costs you 35 bucks more. No, I don't resent that a bit. <laughs> anyway, guys, I think seriously you want to stay away from this. The, until they improve the core, make it a little bit tougher or at least make it replaceable, put something in there in such a way we can remove the core to replace it with something that resists picking a little more than these two guys, I think you want to stay away from this model. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal.